Welcome to Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Bobby Pominville, and I am your arts reporter. And this segment is going to be really entertaining for us all. I have invited a puppeteer today. Heron Gardner is here, and I want to welcome him to the show. It's great to be here, Bobby. <laughs> and I, I feel like I can't wait to meet these other people you brought. And they're so colorful and attractive to me. So we'll get into that and um, we'll see what he's going to be doing with puppets in the near future. So could we start with a question uh, or a suggestion? Could you tell us how you got into puppets for children and how long you've been doing this? Well, that's easy because uh, I'm sort of just a big kid. <laughs> and I've always been, uh, I don't know when I got interested in puppets, but I've always, it's always been there. Mm -hmm. And I love performing for children because of the openness, the imagination, the excitement. Um, it's a great, always a great audience. Wonderful. So how long have you been doing it or don't you oh, want to tell us? Oh, no, I don't mind. <laughs> this has been at least 30 year, 30 oh, year pursuit. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, and, and when you think back, what really got you interested in this? Uh, Anything special? Well, you know, there was Howdy Doody. There was. Oh yeah. There, and there was um, um, Bert Hillstrom uh, early on, and uh, I got involved with the Puppeteers of America when I was in my twenties, and I went to uh, you know festivals, and I got to see Bert Hillstrom doing uh, his show very close up. That was great, and. Mm -hmm. um, Met a lot of other puppeteers, saw many, many shows, okay. European as well as American, and uh, that just kept me rolling along. Good, and lots of uh, interesting things for you to pick up on. And oh, absolutely. Very good. So how do you choose the stories? You know, all my stories are original, and they come out of my primarily uh, childhood. Like this play uh, that we're doing right now, A Night on Bear Island, actually um, came out of an experience of camping in my backyard <laughs> when I was, I don't know, seven, eight years old Ooh. with a friend. <laughs> and we saw my parents set up a little pup tent and we got all prepared. And then uh, the father of um, my friend took us to a candy store, which was probably a bad <laughs> bad idea and we loaded <laughs> up on candy. Oh. We went back and we had flashlights and we talked and we ate uh, candy and talked some more and I, I don't know if we read comic books or what but finally we turned the light, the flashlights off, tried to go to sleep and all of a sudden there was this thump, 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 thump on the tent walls. There was some huge animal or something out there trying to get in. So we were just, you know, like, oh, oh, what is it, what is it? You know, it's, is it a bear? Is it a bear? Is it a wolf? I mean, <laughs> this was not in an area where a bear had been seen in 75 oh. years or more, you know, or oh. 100 perhaps. And so we had, you know, our imaginations ran wild and finally it stopped. So John, my friend, got up and ran home. Well, I stuck around for a little bit longer, then again, this creature came back, and when it left, I came into the house. Well, it turned out that it was uh, Duke, the neighbor's big Irish setter, who was oh. out, and of course, he smelled the food. Oh. <laughs> and so, but that gave me years later, I mean, and then when I had kids and we went camping, strange noises in the night. So that's what this play is about. They go to Bear Island. This is Basil and Samantha. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I can maybe let them tell a little bit of okay, how this happens. Let's hear. Because Samantha says, Oh, Basil, I know the perfect spot. It's such a beautiful day. Let's have a picnic. Oh, ho, ho, I love picnics, especially the desserts. Oh, well, all right. I'll pack the lunch. You bring dessert. I'll bake a honey cake. Oh, ho, 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 I love your honey cakes, Basil. Oh, me too. Well, that's settled, you know. And I know the perfect spot. Bear Island. Well, Bear Island, uh, 
I don't know if I really want to go out there. Why not? Well, uh, well, we'd need a boat. No problem. I'll ask Louie for his. Well, what about my stomach? What's wrong with your stomach? It's easy for it to get uh, queasy. Oh, Basil, I'm an expert sailor. You won't get seasick. Oh, promise? Trust me. Besides, I hear Bear Island's loaded with blueberries this time of year. So what do you say? Well, I say I'd go anywhere for blueberries. So Basil get, <laughs> is convinced to get on the boat. They go to Bear Island. Yeah. And then uh, they have a wonderful picnic. And Basil's uh, honey cake is a big, big hit. Mm. Samantha says, oh, I just can't think of another thing we could have had or wanted. And he says, well, I can. What? How about another piece of honey cake? <laughs> oh, really? So she says, yes, but where is it? It's in the boat. We'll go get it. So Basil goes off, comes back, and Samantha says, well, where's the honey cake? Uh, well, uh, tell you the truth, Samantha, I couldn't find it. What? Basil, you said it was in the boat. Oh, yes, I know, Samantha, for an effect, it's in the boat. Well, then what's the problem? Did you look in the boat? Well, uh, no, I didn't look in the boat. Well, why not? Well, because I couldn't find the boat. You couldn't find the boat? Basil, you're not making any sense. Samantha, the rope broke, the boat floated away, and... We're now, uh, well, we're now marooned on Bear Island. What? Oh, 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 this is horrible. It's terrible. It's awful. Basil, 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 we're never going to get off of Bear Island. <laughs> Quack. Samantha, take it easy. Everything's going to be all right. How can you say such a thing? Because I am a bear scout. What's that mean? It means, Samantha, I am prepared. So Basil, <laughs> Basil takes over and demonstrates Good. his his uh, survival skills. Oh, and that's uh, great. So then, say Samantha, kind of you know gets relaxed and they build a fire. She's very impressed because he she he builds it by just rubbing two sticks together, mm. and he finds dinner for them with from roots and berries, and builds a little shelter. So she's kind of relaxed now, and she says, oh, it was foolish of me, you know, why should I get nervous? We'll get off the island. Yes. How long do you think it'll be before we're rescued? Oh, we'll be home by within two weeks. What? Wrong answer, Basil. I can't stay here two weeks. I got things to do. Well, we can find lots of things to do on Bear Island. Oh. She says, oh, sure, dig roots, pick berries. Uh, not too much fun. So they, but anyway, she said they go to bed, <laughs> and um, then, of course, there are noises, strange noises in the night. You know, you don't ever know, you never know what's going to be out there, and of course, mm -hmm. um, Samantha is convinced there are monsters, mm -hmm. um, because there's one monster out there that she hears, or one noise mm -hmm. that she hears that's going, ribbit. Ribbit. Oh, yeah. Ribbit. Ribbit. Ooh. Ribbit. 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 <laughs> and of course, it turns out to be Beauregard the Frog. And he meets Basil. Mm -hmm. And he says, Well, how do, stranger? Well, I'm fine. How about yourself? Well, I can't complain. Beauregard's the name, and I'm going to a wedding. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, I'm marrying Miss Mousy tonight, and I wrote a poem special for the occasion. Uh, say, would you like to hear it? Oh, I, well, I, well, I love poetry, yes. All right. Here comes the bride. She's so short, she's tall, she's so narrow, she's wide. Now her cheeks are so rosy, why, they're almost pale. If I say any more, well, and I just might end up in jail. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Oh, say, I am impressed. Would you say that's modern verse? Well, tell you the truth, couldn't get much worse. Well, so long, stranger, I better be on my way. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. <laughs> well, I gotta say, you don't meet a frog like that every day. So that's the first monster. Oh. And he comes Great. back and he tells Samantha, well, it was a frog, Samantha. Oh, gee, I'm, you know, I was sounded so scary. And then a little bit later, they go back to sleep, 
and then they hear somebody saying, who oh, I am, what I am, what I am. I am what I am, what I am, what I am. There never was, nor there will there ever be, another creature just like me. Basil says, well, I agree, who are you? Oh, I'm the Baquito. Baquito? I never heard of such a thing. Well, I am what I am. My mama was a mosquito. My papa, a bat that fell in love, you see, and now there's me. Oh, I hope you don't mind, I'm one of a kind. And Basil says, me mine? No way. I always say biological diversity makes my day. <laughs> so he goes back and tells Samantha that there was a Bakito out there and then everything's, they settle down again. Mm -hmm. Now this character over here is kind of this mm -hmm. woodland princess mm -hmm. that is Bettina. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I can, Do you want it? yes, could you just pass Bettina yes. over? I oh, certainly thank you, Bobby. Will. There you go. Now, Bettina actually lives on Bear Island. She is the queen, or the bear anyway, of Bear Island. Ooh. And as you can see, she's a little bit more rustic. She's not a sophisticate of any sort. Yes. And she goes out and she says, well, land sakes, it's a beautiful night. That big old moon just a shining so bright. Oh, this would be a perfect night for roasting marshmallows and telling stories. But where's the fun in telling stories when you're all alone and I haven't even got a telephone? All I can do is hoot and holler. That's the only way for me to get some company. Marshmallows, marshmallows. Oh, you want them? Well, I got them. Come and get them, marshmallows. <laughs> well, of course, she's hollering through the woods. Mm -hmm. And that sets off Samantha and Basil. They really think, Basil has been poo-pooing all these other, but this time he isn't sure. He says, she said, Samantha, do you think that's the, the monster? He says, well, I don't know for sure, but it sounds big and scary. So, he promises to go out and look for her because Samantha says, well, I'd go, but I'm too scared. And besides, you are a bear scout, Basil. You're prepared to face danger. So they go out. He does, and he bumps into Bettina, gets very scared and runs away. Samantha comes looking for him because she's worried. He's been gone, and even though she's afraid of the dark, she's, Basil is her friend, so she's gonna look for him. Mm and uh, she finds Basil and he's really scared. And she says, what, 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 does that mean you've seen the monster, Basil? Well, yes. Well, well, what's it look like? It looks awful. Well, can't you be a little more specific? I mean, does it have green scales and breathe fire? Well, well, well no, not that I could see. <laughs> oh, well, thank goodness for that. But then what kind of a monster can it be? Uh, well, you see, it sort of looks like me. Oof. What? You don't look like a monster, Basil. We're done for, Samantha. There's a bear out there. Basil, you mean to tell me you are afraid of a bear? You're a bear. But this bear's nothing like me. It's a wild bear. Anyway, Samantha then, Basil then confesses that he was, he's, doesn't, he's not really brave. And Samantha says, nonsense, you are brave. Took courage to go out all alone in the dark looking. You didn't know what it was. It could have been a monster, but it wasn't. So now, I'm gonna go f try to find that bear. Maybe he can help us. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You're dealing with a wild animal. Well, she goes and finds, looks and she says, Basil, I see your bear and he's a she. Oh, really, well, what's she doing? Roasting marshmallows. <laughs> now look, I am hungry. She's a bear, you're a bear, go talk to her. Oh no. <laughs> so Basil does, he goes, talks to her, finds out that they're related because he says, Oh, pardon me, I hope I'm not intruding, but you bear a strong resemblance to my uncle, Harry Bear. You wouldn't happen to know him by any chance. <laughs> Harry Bear? Yes, Harry Bear. You say Harry Bear? Harry Bear. Well, land sakes, Harry Bear is my uncle. What? If Harry Bear is your uncle and he's my uncle, that means we must be cousins. Now, you just sit down, cousin, have a marshmallow. So it ends up with a happy ending. Oh, good. And the monster, of course, was just a new friend to be. <laughs> and what you've done is you've taken these lovable characters and you're teaching children about their fears.
Exactly. And it's, it's so perfect because they're going to identify with these wonderful, colorful characters you have. And you're, the way you've told the story is just marvelous. I could see where children would really enjoy this. Oh, they do. I mean, I, And I, adults. Yes, yeah. And I've had, I remember last summer when I was over at Highland at the library there, mm -hmm. father came up, he had three adorable little kids with him, and he said, you know what? He said, I just couldn't get over it. We just came back from a weekend of camping, and we went through this. He said, this oh. is absolutely <laughs> our experience. Timely. It really is, and it's, it's something a lot of children experience. So yeah. You've hit a good subject here, I think. Yes, yeah, you're right. It's, I think it's a fear, you know, I saw fear of the unknown. We always make it a little bit worse than, you know, if we can't oh, yeah. see it or know it or it's We're strange. all like that, even sure. adults. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so be sure you tune in later because keep, keep attuned to this channel because guess what? He's going to do the entire play, A Night on Bear Island. And I think you really would like to watch it, and, and not only is it entertaining, it's really teaching something. So I hope the audience uh, stays tuned into this, and I just have a few more questions. Well, go ahead. All right. So where could we see a puppet show like this? Where might you be performing? Well, I'm performing a, a Thursday, this Thursday, the 24th, at Riverview Library in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Now that's probably the closest because after that I'm up north at Purim oh, yeah. Yeah. and then I'm down south in Austin in July. Oh, yeah. And you have a busy schedule. Well, then I'll be over in some libraries again in St. Paul in August. Okay. So, uh, but I hope to get over here at some yes. point. I hope you have some pending things that might happen in Hudson. Well, that's I a possibility. I hope poss that, that's that a possibility. actually happens. That's a or in any neighboring districts here, if anybody wants to call in and get more information, we can provide them with that. Oh, well, that would be great. Yeah, because I think this is a really good show, and I could see it um, being very appealing. So what do you think about um, someone? I imagine this is a little bit of a, I don't want to say dying art, but I don't think you have a lot of people that are really getting into puppets these days. I think it's a, a wonderful artistic endeavor. But what would you say to that? I mean, what, how could you encourage someone who might want to do puppets? Well, you know, uh, actually there are, there's sort of a revival. There's always, I think there are always people who are puppeteers because there, it, it involves uh, so many different skills. Um, artistic, sculpting, making the puppets, uh, writing the scripts, acting, and people can do one or all of those things. I sort of like to do everything. Yes. But, um, so there is a, uh, th that's an opportunity, and I think I've, all the puppeteers that I've known started when they were kids. Oh yeah. I don't know exactly why that is. Mm -hmm. I did, and other people that I've known, they said, oh yeah, I used to like to do a, in the garage or in the basement or in the hayloft or wherever, it would do oh, puppet shows. Oh, I think that's marvelous. So I think if you're a puppeteer, you know it. Yes. And if uh, someone really wants to get more information, there is the uh, Puppeteers of America. Oh yeah, you mentioned that. And they have a website and so uh -huh. on. So they can get more information there. And I suppose one of the outstanding ones is Jim Henson. Yes. Because all the characters he created mm -hmm. have become very beloved in America. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I want to back up a little because um, you told me that you have made all these puppets. Now tell me a little bit about that. How do you do that? How what, do you make them? Well, the heads are yeah. they're paper mache. Mm -hmm. But first, they're modeled in uh, plasticine, which is a non-hardening clay, modeling clay. Okay. Um, and so I first create the character in clay, then I overcast. I just put the paper on, okay. you know, cut it off, and then put it, glue it back together. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have um, I have mechanism in here to move the 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 jaw. Oh yes. Now these are this is these are uh, rod puppets. 
as opposed to a hand, you know. Oh, that's you have right. A, yeah, a glove there puppet are where you have. Puppets. Yeah. And I can attach uh, an arm control if I want to, but because of this show, I often perform by myself. Yes. I couldn't really have two Very puppets difficult. up. So I sort of designed it so that I could kind of get a little movement in mm -hmm. and the arms flop around mm -hmm. a bit. But I think the, the the movement of the mouth is important. Oh, very much so, and it takes coordination. Well, you get you get sort of used to it. Yeah. And then sometimes uh, I have a perf uh, partner, Lindy Gassman, who performs with me. Oh, okay. And then we have uh, that's a little more freedom because you can have two puppets up with <laughs> and have a hand free. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that would be uh, great because you could expand a little bit in your own little realm there. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. So the costumes and everything, you're just you're really doing it all. Well, I have to be truthful. I don't do the costumes. But you must have some ideas. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think really you are in control of the whole show. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And that's, it's, I'm a it's just I'm a, a wonderful creative thing. I'm a what dictator, you're doing. a control freak. These guys don't have a chance. I often tell my audience, you know, that mm -hmm. that uh, well, you know, I'm a hard taskmaster. Mm -hmm. And I read some of the reviews on the internet, and it's very positive. Yes, People audience are is very really, yeah, impressed with what you're doing. So I think um, I just would have to encourage people to go see it. Well, thank you. And hopefully it would be in Hudson someday. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so. I hope so. Um, anyway, I've really enjoyed this. It's been great. It sort of takes me back to teaching a little bit and my childhood and maybe finally watching things on TV occasionally that are this creative, but you don't usually get that much creativity. <laughs> but it's really a great offering you have here. And um, if you have any questions, you can contact us at the station. But I do want to encourage you now, you're going to see a wonderful show produced by Heron Gardner, and it'll air pretty much right after our interview. So thank you very much for coming today. I've enjoyed talking with you. Well, I've had a great time, Bobby. And I, I'm delighted with your show and your puppets. I think it's something that everyone would enjoy. Like you say, intergenerational. It is, yeah. Everybody, it's a family audience, family show. Excellent. Well, thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll probably see you next month. But meanwhile, stay tuned. You're going to see more puppets. A night on Bear Island. It'll be fun to see what happens in that story. So thank you again. A night on Bear Island is the story we will tell concerning two friends, Basil and Samantha, and their adventures that befell on that mysterious island so named, oh, where creatures rare and strange do dwell, or so it's claimed. Now at night on Bear Island, when it's too dark to see, the question is, do monsters lurk there behind every tree? Oh, 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 friendship can be put to the test when fear strikes and gives no rest. Well, all we can do is hope for the best. And so we say, if you please, watch our little play. However, today we aren't going to do the whole play. We're just going to show you a few short scenes from A Night on Bear Island. Oh, let's turn back, Samantha. The waves are getting bigger and bigger. Let's turn back before it's too late. Basil, it's just a little squall, that's all. So you say, but it's too rough for me. Oh, no, now my stomach's feeling queasy. Oh. Basil, take it easy. Think picnic and blueberries. Oh, I couldn't eat a thing. Oh, 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 my stomach. My stomach. Don't despair, Basil, because now we're there.
Bear Island. Oh, it's grand to once again stand on dry land. And guess what? What? My appetite's just come back. Oh, Basil, Basil, you know, this has been a perfect picnic. I can't think of another thing we could ask for. I can? What? How about another piece of honey cake? Ooh, -hoo. oh, Basil. Oh, alas, you know, we ate it all. There's not even a crumb left. How true. But I baked two. Oh, you did? Oh, oh, well, where is it? In the boat. Uh, should I go get it? Oh, you have to ask, Basil. Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, Basil, just a wonderful friend. And let me tell you something. His honey cake is yummy, yummy, yummy for the tummy, tummy, tummy. A yummy, yummy, yummy for the tummy, tum, 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 tummy. Hmm, well, what's keeping him so long, you know? I better go look for Basil before he starts to sample that cake. Oh, Basil, Basil, Basil. Oh, gosh. Now I got a really big problem. Well, I don't want to upset Samantha, but I got to tell her the truth. Oh, there you are, Basil. Hey, Basil, uh, where's the cake? Well, to tell you the truth, Samantha, I couldn't find the cake. What? Why, I thought you said it was in the boat, Basil. Yes, I know for a fact it is in the boat, Samantha. Well, then, what is the problem? Well, did you look in the boat? No. Why not, for goodness sakes? Well, I couldn't find the boat. You couldn't find the boat? Oh, Basil, you're not making any sense. Samantha, the rope broke, the boat floated away, and, uh, well, now we are marooned on Bear Island. Marooned? Oh, well, that's horrible. That's terrible. That's awful. Basil, Basil. What are we ever going to do? I mean, we'll never get off of Bear Island. Oh, quack, quack, quack. Samantha, take it easy. Everything will be all right. Well, how can you say such a thing, Basil? Well, because I'm a bear scout. Bear scout? What does that mean? It means, Samantha, that I am prepared. Hey, hey, Basil, Basil, where are you going? To find food and to build shelter. Oh, well, this I gotta see. Basil, Basil, wait for me.